Hi guys. Um, today I'm going to look at uh, an appliance that I I got, and uh, it's a Barracuda One Nine Zero or One Ninety, um, <coughs> and it's sold as a, as a backup uh, appliance. It's a backup server. Um, and this is kind of an old model. It has uh, 250 gigabytes of uh, internal storage, and it's supposed to be used with a subscription to Barracuda uh, for offline backup and so on. So um, I got this unit, and uh, I don't know the password for it, and uh, so it's basically useless. So I will try to see if uh, I can make some kind of use out of this box and uh, I will start with uh, a teardown so that we can see what's uh, inside and then try to see if, uh, if we can hack it and put something else on it uh, that makes it usable. <coughs> so uh, let's start by taking a, a look inside. And, uh, here it is. Uh, it's a Barracuda backup server. Barracuda backup server 190, as you can see here. And it's got all the official stuff on it. But it's very uh, nice unit, very heavy. And on the back, we have <coughs> some different uh, connections. We have power, mouse and keyboard, serial port, parallel port, VGA, some USB ports, and a network port. And that's that's about it. And um, I'll try to uh, open it up and let's see what's inside. And uh, we can now look inside. Okay. So uh, what we see here is that it's it's basically a, a PC. There's a hard drive here, 250 gigabytes Barracuda hard drive um, by Seagate. There's a, actually a just this is just a PC. It's called Winboard 330. So that's an uh, Intel Atom motherboard. There's a power supply and uh, a small cooling fan here and uh, a lot of wires. So uh, that's what's inside. What you can see is that it has been modified a little bit. Um, up here, where usually the uh, sound connectors would be, the audio in and out, uh, that is empty. If you look at the back side, you can see that uh, the, the holes are there in the cabinet, but, uh, but it's not on the motherboard. And uh, there's another thing. Um, we see here, uh, there are actually a few connectors on the printer port that have, have wires, which goes uh, out here somewhere. Um, I'm not sure what they do, but the printer port is, is actually just an input-output port, so that could be for, the, uh, for some of the stuff. Uh, on the front panel um, to be controlled by the uh, by by the software. So, um, but basically, it's just a PC with a hard drive. So, it should be po possible to uh, repurpose this for something else. We could even make our own backup server or a small web server or, well, anything. Um, 
I had thought about uh, making it into a firewall, but as you can see, there's only one network adapter here, and uh, even though it has a PCI slot, there's no easy way to mount uh, an extra PCI slot with a network interface here. So uh, I don't think I'm going to be using it as a firewall, um, because that would probably be too difficult. So, um, But let's try to, uh, to boot it up and see what happens. Now everything is connected and uh, I can provide power and try to turn it on and then we'll shift the camera to the screen. And it comes up with a nice screen. It doesn't look like a normal uh, BIOS boot up screen, so obviously it has a, a custom BIOS, but um, since this is a normal PC motherboard, it should be possible to find <coughs> the normal BIOS for this, uh, this board and see if we can flash it for that. So, and it's trying to get a an IP number and it is on the LAN. So this is basically it. Um, I haven't found any other things I could do with this uh, from this interface here. Uh, it's supposed to have a web interface as well and I have tried that um, and just asked for a password. So uh, researching that uh, uh, the password apparently is one you get from Barracuda and you have to reset it with the email address that originally installed this unit and I don't have that so um, it's basically useless uh, as it is and um, the next step I will try to do is to, uh, to flash uh, a real BIOS so that I can go in and um, well, and uh, use it as a normal server and uh, make it do something interesting. So I will shut it down now again, just pressing the button. What I have done is I have prepared a USB stick with the FreeDAS um, and uh, I have found the the BIOS for this motherboard on the internet and I will try to uh, to boot from this stick and see if, if I can uh, flash the real beer BIOS so it's so hopefully it will accept the uh, the boot menu so that I can boot from the from the USB stick F11, I think, I'm trying, yes, so uh, pressing F11 a few times here, you can see I got to the, the boot screen and I can select my USB, oops, I can select my USB stick. just boot from a normal DOS 86 system. Okay, so um, I think I have a directory called BIOS. Uh, yes. And I have here, um, actually I have flash utility that comes with the, the BIOS when you download it uh, for for the Winboard 330. Um, this is the flash utility here. 
and this is this is the BIOS that you download and uh, I have already run this utility to save the old um, BIOS if you just run it without options I think you can uh, I think you can actually see yeah so you have some different options here or one of them is to take a backup of the existing BIOS that is the slash O so you just run the program name and what you want to call the BIOS and then slash O and then it takes a backup of the original BIOS just in case and if you don't do anything except uh, write the name I think it should uh, flash the BIOS so let's try to do that this and a73 yeah there it is so I think this one I'm gonna take the lane again here yeah. okay so you see this command line down here should uh, actually install the BIOS for this motherboard uh, the generic BIOS so let's do that okay so now we should have uh, a standard PC BIOS uh, on this motherboard and um, You just leave that in here and let's try to reboot the system and see if it gives us a, a normal bias screen control or delete yes it does so whoops it's fast f1 to enter setup and we have a normal uh, CMOS setup that we can use. So uh, let's try to have a, a look there. We have the date and time, and that looks correct. It does not have any IDE. It has this Seagate hard disk. Let's see what kind of system we have. Okay, so we have an Atom 330 with a frequency of 1.6 gigahertz and one gigabyte of memory and uh, the Atom 330 is actually a dual core processor so um, that's okay it's not very fast but it is dual core so it should be usable for, for something so that's great um, I would like to, uh, to use the one down here, load optimized defaults, that's always a good idea uh, because you never know what kind of strange things this Barracuda BIOS had, had stored in the CMOS and uh, yeah let's try to save it, F10 and then it should start the buyer start up with uh, the normal bias so we can see that's an MSI motherboard and it still tries to run the uh, the Barracuda software so we don't want that we don't we want something else so I'm gonna take out the the free DOS stick here and see if I can find something more useful. I have a Ubuntu 16.10 server, 64-bit, and this Atom processor should actually support 64-bit. So um, let's try that. And then reboot again. And this time I would go to the boot menu to to boot from the USB stick. Yeah, I got that. I will choose generic flash. It should boot up into the Ubuntu installer. 
Yes, it does. And uh, English. I'll just change the key map to Danish because that's where I am. So it fits my keyboard. So let's try to run the installer and see uh, and see what happens. Did you get it? At, at the board down here I don't know if you can see it but there are actually two SATA connectors here where only one of them are used so if you need more storage you could actually mount another hard disk here I don't know if there's space for two normal hard drives but then you could put in an SSD or whatever or even remove the big one here and, and mount a few uh, laptop drives. So there should be room for that. And now we have the installation coming to the asking for a server name and we just can call it Barracuda. actually only one RAM slot in this, uh, in this machine so uh, if you want to upgrade you need to get another memory stick this one has one gigabyte and I think the processor supports two gigabytes which is not much but it could be fine for a small server running yeah a web server or something else People use it as a storage server. I mean, if you could put a a big hard drive in there and uh, just export it as an iSCSI uh, volume or something like that, that would be possible. Now we come to the point where we can select the packages we want. Um, we could install a LAMP server or a mail server or whatever. Samba file server? Okay, let's put in a Samba file server. Um, and of course, SSH. So that's what we're going to do. SSH server. Standard utilities, we need those. And a Samba file server. So, Okay. Okay, so installation is complete and uh, it's time to reboot. I have to remove the USB stick. Just get out of it here. So um, I will remove the USB stick by Ubuntu install USB from that. And then just press continue and see if it boots up.
So far, so good. <clears throat> not visible. Okay. So as you can see now I have the Ubuntu 1610 login prompt and um, if I can remember my password Excellent. So I'm now logged in. And as you can see, it installed from the USB drive, so uh, it has detected on the network that there are some packages that need to be up updated, and that's okay. Uh, and you usually want to do that every time you install uh, a new machine. So um, I will just do that so make, to make sure it's totally up to date. Okay, so uh, the update has been done and uh, I will reboot the machine in order to uh, make everything take effect. And then it should be uh, all updated with the latest patches and whatever. And uh, now it's logged in, everything is cool. Let's see if we can make it a little bit more bigger. Um, okay, so let's log in. See this. Everything is ready. Get updated. And now I will install my favorite monitoring tool. H top. It has been installed. Let's see how it looks. Wow, it actually has two cores and hyper threading. So it's, uh, it's actually a nice little CPU. You can see there. It records four CPUs. 
which of course is only two cores, but uh, but with hyperthreading. So uh, that's really great. And over here you can see what's running is not so important, but here you can also see that <coughs> it has one gigabyte of memory and it is using 114 megabytes right now and uh, not using any swap space. So we have a nice little server here that uh, can potentially actually do something interesting. So if we quit that, and uh, look at the drives, you can see we have the partitions here. And the disk utilization, again. <clears throat> Up here we have our hard drive, 228 gigabytes. Uh, it is currently using two gigabytes for the system. And we have 214 gigabytes available. So the system is not taking up that much. And we have a lot of space for uh, for backups or for web server content or whatever. So let's try. Uh, what was I doing? Oops. Clean. Okay, like that. Then let's, then let's see how much space we got. Um, okay, so we got it down to 1.9 gigabytes. Um, that's in used space, and so we have 214 available. Oh, okay, but I'm gonna uh, stop this for now. We have the Barracuda repurposed and uh, hacked. And we can now use it for whatever we want. And um, I can connect to it with uh, SSH over the network. And I just have to have it show me my, the IP address. And we can see here it has 192.168.0.135. And uh, well, that was the uh, Barracuda Backup Server 190, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did doing it. Um, I will find a purpose for this machine uh, and perhaps make a video about that. And one thing I, I would like to do with it is that, you see, I, I have a lot of those these small uh, LCD displays here. It's a uh, 16 by 2 uh, characters, and um, there are actually uh, different software that drives those from the parallel port. And this one, this Barracuda, actually had a parallel. It has a parallel port. So, um, well, it would be a fun little project to uh, to connect this. LCD display to the parallel port and have it show some interesting statistics like CPU load or disk space available or whatever, temperature, who knows? It could be a fun little project uh, to, uh, to hack this Barracuda server a little more. So it's been saved from uh, being bricked or actually being useless as it was and uh, now turned into something uh, useful. So please, uh, if you want to see more of this, please like uh, the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, I will put more stuff up on my channel uh, similar to this and uh, other kinds of uh, interesting hacks or whatever. So uh, until next time, have a nice one. 
like and subscribe. Bye for now.